Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. And one of the things I often get asked about is why don't I add network download speed test to speed test G or why don't I do videos in general about download speeds on different devices? Well, if you wanna find out why, please let me explain. Okay, so the idea of a network download test is this. I've got a device in my hand, Samsung, OnePlus, Sony, whatever. And I want to see how good are the modems, that's both for Wi-Fi and for cellular, how good are the modems in the device and can I download things very, very fast? Or is this somehow been crippled? Is it somehow got a bad modem and is it somehow doesn't work with whatever? So the idea is, can I test it? Now, that test itself is actually fraught with lots of problems, which is why I don't do those kind of tests. Now, let me explain to you what some of those problems are. Now, in the normal test, what happens is I'm on my smartphone, you download an app and there are some popular apps available and that app will say, hey, let's connect over your cellular to a server that we think is near to where you physically are and we're gonna upload a file to their server, download a file from that server and measure how long that takes, how many bytes were transferred and give you a speed. Now, that's great. That actually works and it does what it says. It will download and upload files from that server and give you a speed. However, that speed is never consistent. And it's not the fault of the app that it's not consistent. I want to just underline that. It's not the app's fault that it's not consistent. It's the fact that that test has got so many variables in it that when those variables start to change, of course, you get different download speeds. So what are the variables? Well, the first one is which network you're connecting through. So is it Wi-Fi or is it LTE? And we'll talk about the differences between those in a moment. So first of all, which network? And then secondly, which server you're connecting to? So of course, the server you're connecting to actually might be physically near you. It might be a bit further away from you. And if two people ran the same test, you don't know how far away that server is. And thirdly, once it goes out onto the internet, there is lots of routing that goes on inside your local geographical area, inside the country you're in, and then of course on a worldwide scale that can change dramatically the, sp the speed test that you get. So for example, if I'm in an area where I've got a good connection to the server that's been picked because of the cables in the ground and the cables running overhead and the fiber optics and all this stuff, if I've got good connection once I'm out onto the network, then I'm gonna get a different result than somebody who may have a fast connection to their tower or to their internet service provider, but from there until that server, actually the connection is slightly uh, lower quality, like lower bandwidth. Now, another problem we've got, of course, is how busy the network is, and that implies also your uh, local connection through your service provider and how busy the internet is in your country. So if it is on the edge of a holiday, or an evening or holiday and a major sporting event is on or a new film has been released on Netflix or on whatever streaming service or whatever, then of course there are gonna be fluctuations in the volume of traffic in your local area and they will affect the speeds that you get on your actual device because once it leaves your device and goes out to the network, you have no control over which route it takes, which path it goes down, the speed of that path, how it gets to that server and so on and so on. And as I said, you could be connecting over uh, Wi-Fi or you could be connecting over LTE. Now, if you're connecting over LTE, then of course what can happen is it depends on how many people there are actually physically near where you are connected to the same tower as you are. Now, you might not have ever thought about that, but I live in an area that's quite touristy and I can tell you that at weekends or during major tourist events, my LTE speeds just plummet, crash absolutely right down. And that's not because suddenly my handset is broken or suddenly because my telecom provider has decided to not give me the bandwidth. There are now 10 times more people, 50 times more people connected to the same towers and they're all trying to do their Instagrams and their, and their emails and their Twitters and their Netflix and everything else all to their devices and there's only so much bandwidth and you have to split it up. And that happens both in terms of the backbone 
and also in terms of the way the radio frequencies are used from the tower to the individual handsets and how they're controlled and so on and so on. So there's a lot of technology that goes on about sharing the signal, sharing the spectrum, sharing the power to all the different handsets. Now, if I was just sitting the only person in a laboratory connected to a test tower and it's only a little distance away, I'm the only person, that's very different to if I'm walking down the high street in a major city, London, Paris, New York, okay, and I'm trying to use my mobile data and around me there are loads of people using their mobile data. And then it also depends on how much bandwidth the actual telecom provider has actually planned for. So obviously in built up areas, they will have more antennas, more ways of splitting up signal. In more rural areas, they're gonna have, it, there's so many variables, you cannot use this as a way of testing uh, con you know, consistently the speed of a, uh, of, a, of a handset connection. And then finally, if you were using Wi-Fi, you do actually have the same problem. Although the Wi-Fi signal may be strong between your device and the router, which may over be there in the corner of your room, again, then once it goes out through the cable, whether that's a telephone cable with something like ADSL, whether it's down a cable modem, for your network TV or even fiber optic, again, you don't know what happens once it gets to the end of the street. Once it gets to the end of the street, it hits a bunch of routers and there's more networking going on. And if all your neighbors are watching Netflix or doing whatever it is they're doing, that can affect. So you can actually, even using Wi-Fi, you can do a test and to say, oh look, I've got you know 50 megabits today. Oh, today I've only got 40 megabits. Well, that's a huge difference. Why? What happened? I got the same device, I got the same Wi-Fi router, Oh, but look, it's eight o'clock and people have, you know, what? there are so many variables about other people's behavior. So in a nutshell, I don't do network speed tests for devices or generally for 5G, 4G, Wi-Fi, whatever, because there are too many variables outside of my control. The only way to really do it would be to have a lab set up here with stuff that I can control and then actually it doesn't really mean anything because it's such a lab environment, such an artificial environment, you will never ever 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 see that environment and it will be of no use to you. Oh one more thing I just thought about, also of course if I've got a smartphone with the latest you know Cat22 modem in it, LG, uh, this is 4, 4G LTE modem in it, but my network provider only provides Cat16 in the local tower, then again, I can have the latest Samsung, I can have the latest Apple, I can have the latest, you know, uh, OnePlus, latest Huawei, and if, it's, and if my local network doesn't support what this device does, then I'm never gonna see the true uh, speed of this device either. So again, fraught, completely fraught with so many variables that are outside of my control. Okay, that's it, my name's Gary Sims, this is Gary Explains, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget the new Speedtest G video. Oh, and I have a little secret, for those of you that have stayed here today, I'm launching a newsletter. So there's gonna be a new newsletter launched very, very soon. Please go to GaryExplains.com to subscribe so that you will be amongst the first to actually receive it. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.